Hi good people, it's Amy from Save or Salvage Scent and I hope this finds you well. For those of you who are new to the channel, this mostly focuses on all things fragrance related with an occasional other creative or DIY project. And uh, for those of you returning, thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't yet, I hope you'll consider clicking the red subscribe button so that we can stay in touch and that you'll get notifications about videos and we can continue the conversation. So today I want to come to you with a collaboration video. Um, I am really, really lucky to do this fun theme with um, five other people. So um, let me tell you who they are. Um, I am going to click information or add information in the description box below. First, quickly, the theme is on eight different perfumes or fragrances over four seasons. So choosing a, a, a day and a night perfume for each of spring, summer, fall, and winter. Uh, the instigator of this amazing idea is Dr. Rose from uh, Dr. Rose's Perfume Corner. A lot of you will be familiar with her, she's phenomenal. Also involved is uh, Bougie Fragrance and her intrepid hubby, uh, photography guy. Um, she's wonderful. Please check her out. Um, some of the YouTubers I'm still getting to know. So um, Ruth from Ruth All Things Beauty is phenomenal. I've been just starting to watch her videos. So, so great. Um, another new to me friend that I hope to learn more about um, goes by the name of Nats and Nurture. Um, really, really interesting content. Um, not just perfume related. Really, really interesting. And then my beloved um, fellow YouTuber, Deborah Day, who is just one of my absolute favorite people to watch. I think she has such a beautiful and interesting collection and style about her. So those are my pals in this um, collaboration. And we're each gonna release a video and talk to you about the eight perfect scents that we would choose for um, four seasons, choosing one for day and night. So I'm gonna dive right in. But again, can't wait to watch my friends' videos. Can't wait to hear what they choose. Um, if you're interested, I I really did try to go with like some of my absolute make or break favorites. Um, they're not all here, but a lot of them are here. I will be honest. Um, there are a few discontinued perfumes in this list, so I apologize for that. Um, but, you know, I couldn't leave my favorites out either. Because there are a few discontinued, I broke the rules a little bit, and I included, a, I think, a couple in a couple categories to choose from. Um, okay, I'm going to dive right in. So let's talk about spring, the, the season that we're in. Um, I chose for my day scent... This is a perfume by Solanotes, um, a Parisian, I think a really inexpensive, kind of almost like a drugstore um, brand. And they're, they focus on, um, focusing on single flowers. They do have multiple notes, but this is their Fleur de Orangere. Um, I got this, my only trip ever to Paris, which was phenomenal a couple years ago. This is super inexpensive, even if you live in the US. The US. This is now, you can see I'm toward the end of my second bottle, over two years. That's how much I love this, and that's that's a lot of use for me for somebody who has a lot of perfume on hand. So this is phenomenal. To me, if you love just a simple, straightforward orange flower, it's perfection. It's beautiful. It's so inexpensive. I want to say you can find this for 25 bucks around. Um, and this is one that I have backup bottles of because I just can't live without it. To me, it's the perfect, it smells just like mock orange or orange flower. Um, and so to me, this is a perfect thing to wear this time of year because pretty soon that will start to bloom. Um, so that is my spring daytime pick. My spring nighttime pick, for those of you who've listened to my channel before, you have probably heard about this scent because it was my favorite, new to me, I think it's been out for a few years, New to me scent for 2020. This is called um, Desert Floor and is made by a company or small indie house called Bohemian Rev. Um, so Bohemian R E V E S. Um, they are out of St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, the nose is named, I believe, is Amelia. I think it's Gaines, I hope. Um, anyways, I, I have to be honest, I am one of those people that I don't hate patchouli like a lot of people say they do. Um, I'm open to it, but I don't love it all either. And so to me, this is like a perfect 
patchouli and it's interesting because I wore this like crazy in the winter when I first got it um, and this is also my second bottle and this is also a scent that I have backups of because I'm crazy about it like I can't even tell you how good this scent makes me feel um, so for as far as patchouli oh my god oh it's so good um, this to me is like the perfect kind of like what do they call it? gateway drug to <laughs> patchouli it's patchouli with like a really nice soft boozy vanilla um, and so it's not quite gourmand it's not quite a, a, a really really super strong patchouli it's somewhere kind of in between and but yet it is I would call this addictive intoxicating it leaves a beautiful trail where people just say oh my god you smell good like it is and it's addicting where like you spray it and I'm like oh I think I'm gonna spray that five more times all over me or I'll spray it on my sheets even it is to me almost one of those spiritual fragrances it makes you feel a kind of way it is beautiful so Bohemian Rev um, desert floor cannot recommend enough just beautiful and while I wore this like crazy in the winter I find that I love it actually most on these um, chilly nights in the spring so it just does beautifully um, kind of in the colder time so um, in the nighttime in the spring all right so those are my spring picks I'm now gonna move into summer and this is the one where I break the rules a little instead of doing one each I did two each because these are harder to find and I want to give you options um, but I also don't want to leave them out because they're like my favorites and yeah anyways I still want to give them love okay so what would I wear during the day in the summer um, well of course I have to talk to you about my favorite ever perfume this is Eau de Reglisse by Caron Ugh. all right a lot of so first of all if you don't if you're not familiar with my channel my thing is like you should wear whatever you like no matter who it's marketed to what gender where you are in the gender spectrum who cares if you love it wear it rock it life is too short um but i would say this for me is just so clearly a unisex scent um and i say that because there was a point where a partner of mine who was male wore this for a while too and loved it um this came out i want to say in like 2006 um, it is since discontinued. It comes in this really interesting, just plain white vial. You can still find it though, pretty affordably for a killer perfume. It's, you can find it for about 60 to $75 online. So again, Eau de Reglisse by Caron. So it basically means scent of licorice. Um, and I know licorice isn't for everybody, but to me, what I actually get most prominently in this is like a slightly softly herbal uh, lemon verbena tea kind of sparkling though and cold I wouldn't say I don't get like a hot tea I get like a colder tea because it's really refreshing and then it does have like um, licorice so it's a cold verbena tea with a little bit of spice and some licorice it is um, invigorating it is refreshing it is just gorgeous and I just feel I wouldn't say this is a heavy compliment getter it's more of a thing where you smell um, or I think I smell really clean and kind of chic like it's it's one of those perfumes that's pretty kind of simple in some ways and feels effortless and it's just to me perfection and there's no other exactly like it there's a few that are kind of in the realm like I would say um, Clarins um, Eau Dynamason uh, is kind of similar but I like this even just a, a hint more so my favorite Caron Eau de Reglisse for the daytime in summer all right, another quick choice, if that's hard for you to find, um, Hermes Jardin Sur le Nile. Shoot, it means basically garden along the, the Nile. This is phenomenal. So this is another one to me where it is a kind of freshy or something that's really uplifting, wonderful to wear in the heat. But it's not your ordinary freshie because it's got a few notes that to me really stand out. Green papaya, carrot, and um, most importantly, a little bit of tomato leaf, which I love. So it's got this just really interesting fresh scent. Again, though, it's really sophisticated too. Um, this was created by the wonderful nose, Jean-Claude Elena. Um, 
And if you haven't, if you're a book nerd about perfume, read the book called The Perfect Scent by Chandler Burr. It's really interesting and it portrays the, um, the making of two scents over the course of a year. One in the New York market, which is Sarah Jessica Parker's Lovely, and then this one, which is um, French and made by Jean-Claude Elena. He was in the in-house perfumer for, or for Hermes for quite some time, and now I believe his daughter is, just in the last few years, which is really cool. But this scent was just, I think, really unique um, for a summer scent, and it just smells wonderful. I just love how I feel when I wear it. Great daytime for the summer. Okay, so let's talk about nighttime for the summer. Um, and I chose two again, because again, these two are even maybe harder to find, darn it. Um, so uh, one of my, these are really like what I would call desert island scents for me, um, or holy grail scents, because they were hard for me to find too. Um, the first is called, and this is not its original cap, uh, this is called Noble Carnation, and it's by a house called Royal Apothic. You might have heard about that house they um, sold, and they might still sell some scents through anthropology. Um, I am hugely into carnation scents, dianthus, etc. I, I love that smoke, that kind of clovey, spicy scent. A lot of people my age or younger think it's passe, sadly. Um, don't know why. To me, it's one of the most gorgeous, rich, beautiful, heady scents, and I love to smell it outside. Um, this to me is like a gourmand version of um, carnation. It's it's heady, beautiful, rich. Not super gourmand, but leaning a little more gourmand than let's say herbal, something like that. It's beautiful. This originally was I think sixty to one hundred dollars a bottle. Um, this one's almost impossible to find now. It went out of um, commission a few years ago. And I think it was just such a small house. Um, I looked for this for some time and I finally found a bottle for 60, but you might have to look for a while to do that. But I wanna mention again, because I think it's really wonderful if you're a carnation lover, look out for it, try to find it. Um, and it's just wonderful in the evening and summer. To me, that is when Dianthus is blooming or carnation and that's what you will smell like and it just smells wonderful. Because that's hard to find. I'm going to tell you about another one that's a little easier to find, still out of commission, sadly. But um, this is a small bottle of um, a Tom Ford fragrance. And the original was called Sahara Noir. Um, it is my favorite Tom Ford scent. Uh, a lovely, lovely uh, person, listener, you know who you are, gave me a few samples a few years ago. And it was when I was on my way to Paris and I wore them while I was there, so I forever associate that scent. I was there in September, and it still can be hot as hell in Paris in September. And so I love this scent, um, Sahara Noir, because it truly smells like, this is so weird, but it's so awesome, dry, hot desert air. What does that smell like? Well, to me, it almost smells like something like Palo Santo um, incense. It smells kind of like incense -y burning wood. Um, and this to me is such an artwork because it literally smells dry. And so, you know how leaves, dry leaves smell dry. Um, it's kind of like that. And um, a bit of smokiness, obviously, incense-y. And it's wonderful to wear in the sticky heat because it literally, cool. to me, it cools me down. It makes me feel dry, like if I'm sticky. Um, and just to give you an idea of why this bottle looks this way, Traditionally, the bottle looked like black orchid, but it was, I think, a goldish color for Sahara Noir. And it went out of commission, and it's gotten really expensive. It's like 300 plus a bottle to find online, and so that I just was not wanting to do. And I read in a perfume forum that um, someone had, or they had created like a test subject before Sahara Noir. It was the exact same perfume, and it's called Golden Tears. So I found this online for about 20 bucks, a few years ago and I bought four of them because I was like this is just I think a half of an ounce I didn't ever want to be without it it's so phenomenal um, so uh, Sahara Noir or Golden Tears by Tom Ford beautiful dry if you're into incense it's just oh it's such an artwork to make you feel such an experiential thing that it smells like dry hot air incense it just is so cool all right so now moving into things that are easier to find and moving into fall. Um, uh, so 
you'll probably notice if I had to choose, if I could only take, you know, two or three cents into my afterlife, um, they would almost probably all be incense or oriental scents. I just, that's my, that's my bag. Um, love it. Um, and so fall and winter to me are kind of like so easy <laughs> to do. Um, for the daytime, I would choose Kiehl's Original Musk. Um, I love musk and I think it's interesting to some musk lovers that I choose what is kind of like I think a lot of people think of as a middle of the road musk. There are musks that are like for instance Serge Luton um, and let's see, um, oh shoot, what is the name? Um, Bruno Campori. Um, there's a few others that are very, very high end and phenomenal scents. Um, and then there's some really dirt cheap, easy to find. Um, musk sense. This to me is kind of like a middle of the road, like what I would call a dictionary musk. It's like to me the perfect musk. It's not too skanky. It's not too clean. It's not too sweet. Um, it, it's kind of in the middle of all of it, of all the different kind of musks. And this is another one where I'm like, how do you describe why you like what you like? It's beautiful to me. It always has been. The first time I smelled it, I was like, I have to have it. And this is another one where even people who don't like musk will tell me, you smell really good. And I'm like, you didn't like musk um it's gorgeous um not everybody loves it but i would say there are a lot of us who are big fans this can be found really affordably they often have a winter sale or maybe like twice annual sale actually where they go 20 percent or 25 percent off so this is usually i think around 45 i usually pay somewhere between 30 and 35 it's phenomenal this is my second bottle my life too keel's original musk great as a daytime scent in the fall um, okay, so my favorite discovery over the last few years is a niche house called Solstice Scents. They are out of Saint, no, 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 they are out of Gainesville, Florida. The nose's name is Angela St. John, and she works with her partner, I believe her husband, who creates um, with her and does a lot of the artwork. They sell um, a range of products, but mostly, I'd say 90% of their catalog is um, half ounce vials of oils of really phenomenal oils and then they have these bigger bottles I think they're I think they're two ounce that range from about 70 to about 100 um, for their perfumes I can't even tell you how phenomenal this house is um, solstice scents they um, just so you know if you go looking for them right now they tend to close their shop for a few months in the spring I'm dying for it to reopen. It's to reopen, I think, any day, honestly. They usually close from like February through April or May. Um, but if you look at their catalog, it's phenomenal. My instinct is to say that they're known for their Germans. And I think that's true. I, I do think that's what a lot of people talk about, but I think they're good at everything. I swear to God, like the green scents I've tried are incredible. But I have to tell you, as an incense lover and an oriental lover, Oh my God. So let me tell you, in walks a scent called Solstice Kifi. So um, Kifi is kind of like a ritual incense or altar making um, that includes things that would be typical to an altar, of course, but with things like offerings and foods. And so this to me is so special. It's okay. First of all, look at the juice. Look at the color. Like I'm telling you, this is one you will spray it and you will smell it the next day. You will smell it on your clothes for a week. And I love it. It is so good that I'm just like, oh. Um, this is phenomenal in cold evenings. And to me, it's perfect in the fall. So you get the incense, but you get these really interesting notes of like foods that would be left for an offering. So like, I want to say there's citrus. And most interestingly to me, there's a note of raisin in this. And so you get this dried, goopy, resinous fruit with the incense and it is just my god <laughs> I can't even tell you how good this smells I think this is about 80 a bottle but you can also get the oil on the half ounce for about 18 I think it is phenomenal cannot say enough about this house solstice scents perfect fall evening scent solstice kifi check it out wonderful okay winter um yeah, I have a hard time deciding like what would be day or night because yeah, anyways, I think these could be interchanged. Man, am I lucky.
with these. Okay, so I read for years about, or at least maybe a year or two, about Aramis's calligraphy rose, and their calligraphy saffron is phenomenal too. When I read about this, first of all, look how gorgeous this bottle is. My God. Look at the script. Look at the wooden top. It's really heavy. It feels great in your hand. Um, when I read about this, it was kind of mm, described as an American, or a scent made for the American market, but hinting at or bridging things that were beloved in the Middle Eastern market. And I think that's a great description. As I've gotten to know Middle Eastern scents more, this is kind of somewhere in between, and I'm crazy about it. Um, this is one, it's so strong, honestly. When I first sprayed it, I was like, I don't know about this. And then of all things, I went for a really long winter walk. I remember it was snowing like crazy. And I kept thinking <laughs> like, these smell so good. Oh, it's me. It's phenomenal. And it is so gorgeous and resinous. And so it's got, you know, things like incense. And I think it has a little musk in it even, a little bit of wood. And then um, definitely like the incense-y scents. Um, but with a really jammy, thick rose at the same time. I think a lot of people think of things like rose or carnation as only women scents. Listen, this smells phenomenal on a man too. Um, it's incredible. This, I think, is about, either has just gone out of commission or is about to. You can still find bottles for like $60, $70. This to me is like $500 bottle. Uh, quality. No kidding. That is how much I love it. Some of the smartest, frankly, people I know who are really unique and into perfume agree and just say like, this is such a gem. And it's brother perfume or sister perfume called Calligraphy Rose, or sorry, Calligraphy Saffron is also phenomenal and a little less rosy, obviously. Um, they're both incredible, but this is a perfect winter day scent. Calligraphy Rose by Aramis. Gorgeous. Like crazy about it. Um, okay, last but not least, this is one of my, you know, top favorites in my life, Samsara. This is one of the perfumes by Guerlain that made me fall in love with the house and in love with perfume. I had probably maybe had 10 or 20 cents over my life, probably 20, over my whole life. I found this when I was like, let me think, so I'm almost 50. I found it about, maybe about 30. Again, it was really cold winter day. I was with my sister. We went to this gift shop and I just sprayed it on myself. And it's one of those where all day I was like, I cannot stop smelling myself. I smell amazing. I cannot believe how good this is. To me, it smells different than anything else. It's described, I believe, as like an amber woody. And it's just so much more than that to me. It's oriental. And to me, you have to like, you do have to like jasmine. This is heavy in jasmine, but this to me is a winter jasmine. Um, it smells like nothing else. It's phenomenal. I'm still as crazy about it today as I was the first day I wore it. I've been wearing it for, you know, 20 some years. You can still find it. It's in a different bottle now, but the reformulation actually is not far off of this, which is really phenomenal. Um, this was created by John, wait. Um, let me think, let me think. Guerlain, John, is it John Paul Guerlain? Oh, I always forget his middle name. I'm so sorry. Anyways, um, I think the nose before the current. Uh, this was created, I want to say 89 or 90. I hope I'm right about that. Um, people love or hate this, but again, people like me who love it, I just can't imagine my life without it. It's perfect. It's gorgeous. There's nothing like it. In fact, when I was in Paris and I went to Guerlain, and I need to talk about this someday on my channel, it was like the most interesting experience, went to the flagship store on Champs-Élysées, and instead of you like getting bombarded with just smelling all these scents and scent strips, they have this beautiful display when you first walk in the window or the door and instead of telling you exactly what the scents are they have like i don't know it looks like 50 or 100 cents and they have the beautiful bee bottles set up like jewels in the window they're so gorgeous in the different colors of juice and then instead of the label telling you what it is there's a top that you can pull with just a number and so you smell the scent and you experience it kind of in an innocent manner not knowing anything about it no prejudgment and you really give it a, such a different fair chance and you you know you smell the scents and then you can look up and see what they are and I just thought that was the coolest thing and very honestly if I smelled 100 cents that day I loved 70 of them <laughs> like I didn't dislike many maybe not none um, but 
I I could only purchase a few. I was gonna like I was like you're gonna buy two today, but the top three were, um, I the two I took home, which was an Aqua Allegoria, the Limon Verde, and then I took home the Chalimar Souffle Intense. And I loved both of them. The third that I was crazy about that I couldn't stop smelling the top and being like, oh, I, there's just like nothing like this. I love it. And it was this. And I had been wearing it for years, but that's how much I loved it. That even re-smelling it, I was like, this is one of the most incredible things I've ever smelled. And then I was like, well, of course, it's Samsara. Um, so this, I think, is perfect for the evening time and the cold. Honestly, any time. Although you would have to be careful of overspraying in, in the warmer months. But um, beautiful, woody oriental with a lot of jasmine um so those are my choices for the four seasons i can't wait to watch other people's videos i would love for you all to comment below if you're interested of what things you would choose what are your kind of ride or die scents um and um yeah pick up this idea i'm sure that dr rose would love to hear other people and their ideas and if you would like to repost or share or tell us what your ideas would be so thanks for watching and i hope you have a great day cheers bye